Uh, no club here. It's a slight problem. King of Dimes is something. But I don't mind going slightly big here. You could even go three quarters sometimes. I think it's a little bit. Let's go 2.35 and see how that goes. So this is a dual sl uh, stream of sl uh, Slater. But I assume it's Slater. But Slater, if Slater's a different guy, let us know who Slater is because that would be fun. Get Slater in his. Going to jam this. Uh, we don't block any of the hands really that we would want us to call. And so that's nice. Uh, we unblock lots of stuff. And it's a board where we can be very much perceived to have a lot of, I think, combo draws. Queen 10, Jack 10, 10, 7, stuff like that. Of course, he could have us beat with 6, 7 or whatever. But I think a jam works well. Makes it quite tough with a 5, 7, 5, 6. Also, there's a lot of 9x, uh, 9, 7, 9, 6. And he might call an 8x, which he does. Um, obviously, it's a river, so sad times for us, but happy days rim. And actually, to be honest, happy days all around. We're, we're not too dissatisfied with that. Me and Slayer working out our deal well there. <laughs> Uh, Gili Upoka says, do you play cash as well? I do play cash live, put cash, but I'm not online. Uh, I have played in the past, but not for the last five or six years. So, yeah. 2918HM says, maybe you can get some mentor game coaches for interviews. Generally, everyone that would make the grind more efficient and sustainable would be cool for an interview. Um, <laughs> and Agrachar says, that would make the stream like a podcast. And podcast sucks. So shout out to some of the mental game guys I know. Um, so uh, Jared Tendler, the mental game of poker. Those are fantastic. I would 100% endorse those books and him and his approach. I really like it. Quite scientific. Quite uh, a lot of psychology, I think, in those uh, in that approach. Which, you know, is really good. Uh, let's check. Akame says, thank you, Tomo. If it's not too much to ask, I would like that you give examples while you play on different board textures. Heads up. Akame, I will try my best to continue to give commentary at any point I think something is interesting. I will do my best to, to uh, do that as much as I can. Um, as pertains especially the, the rainbow slash monotone slash two-tone flop textures so this rainbow for example on this rainbow board uh means we can have uh let's say we can't have a flush draw we can turn the flush draw of course but the queen of clubs also not a bad thing to have turned it if we get checked to here uh can bet can check both i think are very very reasonable uh with the queen of clubs here i don't mind betting for that reason uh because it will reduce some of the uh, combos of hands that are better than us that check call um not gonna go too big though could also just check here it'll be absolutely fine Alright, let's check. I changed my mind. I was gonna, I was gonna bet, but then to be honest, I don't really want to bet bet this hand. I think that would be a bit over bluffy, and I think Slayer can have a five here quite a lot. But we can also have showdown, um, because it is reasonable that limp stab on an ace board seems fine, right? Could have hit a nine, not gonna fold. King's not gonna fold. Ace not gonna fold. So only really looking at a five that we are beat by. So let's just check, and we have got a five yeah, So. Don't know. Could we have bet and barreled and made a five-fold? Maybe, but probably not. It's a pretty strong hand on that in that board because we don't have much ace-x. We have some king-x, but I don't know if we have king-x that wants to bet and barrel that frequently. So, And queen eyes some showdown, right? That's the EV of showdown. The EV of queen eyes not zero. I think we do win, I hope, sometimes against a hand like jack-2 or jack-4 or 10-4 or 10-2, which I think are reasonable limp c bets you know if you have 10 to hearts you flop a gut shot he's like board start off a bet sure so yeah uh we'll definitely call the queen jack and hit mm -mm. okay we'll go again we'll go again uh jilu poker says how much you charge for spins coaching unfortunately jilu i am not available for public coaching only for six or one members and uh, they get, you know, they get me very cheap because they don't pay for it. I mean, they pay it with boredom because they have to listen to my long sessions rambling on about population tendencies and, you know, odds to call and things like that. But um, unfortunately for public, uh, you, I, all I can offer is make an application to join 651 or... 
for 12 month subscribers, they get a little uh, coaching uh, perk. 12 month subscribers, did I say? And, um, yeah. Obviously, you're very welcome to stick about, ask questions um, if you're struggling with anything in particular. And either myself or probably someone help friendly and help from the chat can also help. Um, just going to pull you up on this screen. Uh, I play 25s now on Winamax, but my Audi is higher than on Winamax 10s. Should I aim for beating 25s or go with the higher hourly now? Mm, it's a good question. There's pros and cons for going for it or not going for it. So in terms of um, going for it, I mean, in theory, right? Long term, a winning 25 player is going to make more chips than a winning 10s player, if uh, all things being equal. You can get comfortable in poker, I think, sometimes. And uh, I've been guilty of the same thing in the past, where like I have a good win rate. Uh, for me, it was like the 15s, and it's like, move up to the 30s. And I was like, nah, I'm doing quite well at 15s. I might just stay... And then I was like, yeah, I'm winning chips or whatever. And, and I, I could have maybe helped accelerate my poker career a bit. And it wasn't really... I played 30s eventually, but I was a bit slow. And then I never touched higher stakes. Now, some of that was sensible because of bankroll management. But, um, yeah, uh, I think... What I think could be good, uh, and as Isaac actually says, why not play both? And I would actually say play both, uh, is a really good idea, which is uh, try not to view yourself, because I think often what happens is people will play 10s and they want to play 25s and they move up and all their action is 25s and that's it. You're suddenly subject to 2.5x the downswings, 2.5x the upswings, 2.5x the pressure in a way. But I think uh, what I would suggest is, let's say you have your week and you have your schedule. Think about typically at the lower stakes, you'll find that at the weekends, games are a bit softer. So I would start with when you're in a position where, and this is applies to everybody, when you're in a position when you want to start playing a higher stake, you think, okay, want to start playing a higher stake, maybe I'll just go and start playing um, every Saturday or Sunday. I'm going to go uh, and play the higher stake, and then for the rest of the week, I'll play my normal games. And that way you have a bit of a balance. If you, if you, go, if you start badly, it's okay. Firstly, you're less likely to start badly because you're playing a softer time, a softer field. But also... Um, if it does start badly, you've still got your bread and butter tens in this case to, to rely on and fall back on and, and you know you win at that. And so that can take a lot of the pressure off. And I think what we want to do is try and make sure that you're not overly pressured and not experiencing too much uh, frustration or too high emotions when you're playing the higher state, which I think is very common to do. Um, but obviously we want to try and get you to 25s long term, right? You, I mean, it's, it's fantastic that you're winning at tens, but it's probably not you're not at your fulfilling your peak poker potential by winning at tens and so uh, i think it's a nice step to make and then if let's say things go well maybe you up that one day a week and you do that for a month and then you go to two days a week and then you do that for a month and then three days a week add friday saturday sunday for example and then you decide add thursday monday i mean historically not much difference between monday to friday that much but friday a little bit better so maybe add friday and then if that's going well suddenly you can phase it all your games to 25s but it's a much softer landing you're not suddenly boom 25 player i have to be in a 10 you're like i'm a 10 player but now my average buy-in sort of like 13 and then next month my average buy-in 17 and then it's 20 and then you know just keep ticking up and if it starts to go badly just slowly you don't have to suddenly stop it just slowly go the other way you know what i mean and, and um that's uh yeah i think uh a, a good idea to, to do something like that um Obviously, lots of stuff's also situational and depends on your goals, your bankroll, things like that. And so those things are also things taken into account, but hopefully that's somewhat helpful. Um, I like having a club and a heart. I would bet the size of one of my jack eggs as well. I don't know if I'm perceived to but I would that's what I would do so it's a question of like yeah I mean obviously you're happy to fold now some jaggers in the limp corner range of course can also open jam this but min raise calls also fine probably min raise shove shove we would fold but uh, against one big, uh, one small blind would definitely call there king queen very reasonable shove this is very neutral EV long term but we'll take the short term boost GG, we'll go again. We are now back to break even after our fantastic winning start. But this is what happens if uh, you don't win, if you lose a few all ins and also don't 
We haven't actually hit many big spins either this evening, so they've all been 2x and 3x. And other times we've had like five or four, two or three five x's in a row, right? At the higher stakes, you should in theory also spin a lower frequency of 2x and 3x because less of your uh, the the 10,000 x buy-in, less of that is is going to the million because it's not actually a it's not actually a, a million spin if that makes sense. Um, it's uh, what is two two thousand x. Does that make sense? Anyway, so that's made up for by the, um, you know what I'm talking about. I can't talk sometimes. Ladies and gentlemen, sometimes I forget how to talk. And then, yeah, you just hear me make grunting noises and hopefully you just go, well, he's trying his best. I think he was talking about something about poker or some numbers or something, but, you know, we just appreciate the job he, the sort of noises he makes and then seems to be cheerful. So, yeah. No, there's a lot of... Uh, Massive enthusiasm for the the board apes currently. Some of the uh, chat on the Discord you can see in the Discord. I think uh, Jason's been talking about his affinity to the board ape uh, NFTs. Have I purchased any? No. Would I purchase any? Maybe not really. But I I remain open to it. I was a bit more. I couldn't understand NFTs and then. Uh, actually, chat to Mocha, Ryan, City Roller Chocker, people probably know him. Um, and he was really extolling the virtues of NFTs and encouraged me a little bit. I'm, I'm open to them, let's say. I still am not entirely convinced the value it give me. But um, cause just because I can't see value doesn't mean that it's not there, right? And also, yeah. Um, just because I can't see value in something doesn't mean it doesn't have value for me. It's like money. If you just gave me money on its own and I'd never seen it before, I'd be like, it doesn't even make sense to me, but still value there. What well, size up here? Half pot will be probably correct size. And quarter is obviously very typical, but would be a mistake, I think, on this board, especially with this hand. No diamond, no club. Definitely want to go half here. Um, and then we just jam turn, obviously. We have to be balanced, of course, and so it may be perceived that we're a bit less balanced with that sizing. But um, I don't. I think we would find some bluffs in that spot as well. Um, we jam king six into aces, which is sad, but nothing to be done. We would have called aces certainly, and our opponent would have jammed eight king six. So it's one of those zero EV spots that happens, and then we just go like, okay, GG. King for off also gonna be a jam, and we hope. To not see a snap, and we don't, which is nice. We'll shove King 2 off for 6.8. And we get it slightly ahead. We're officially out of the caffeinated Coca-Cola, by the way, just to point that out. 